And welcome back to our third and final video of the night on slope of a line. And we're going to continue finding slope. This time we have a horizontal line. So we want to talk about that. Uh, obviously, when I take a look at my graph, I cannot go up or down. All I can do is go to the right. So if I don't go up and down, I'm going what? I'm going zero. So my slope being the rise to the run, I have a zero on top. And then when I run, I'm just going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven that I'm going over to the right. Let's calculate that mathematically and see if it comes out to be the same. So I'm going to take and I'm going to label my points. And I'm going to say x1, y1, x2, y2, right on there. And so using my slope formula, remember my slope formula being y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, I can plug in the numbers and I can go 5 minus 5 over 6 minus a negative 1. And so when I calculate that, 5 minus 5 is 0, and 6 minus a negative 1 is 7. So I have a slope of 0 over 7. Ladies and gentlemen, the horizontal line has a slope of 0. And we actually call it and describe it as a horizontal line with a slope of m equal to 0. We call it a zero sloped line, if we were to describe it. Zero slope. And to understand that a line that has zero slope, that means it is a horizontal line. All righty, let's move on to our next one. Our next example is now going to be a vertical line. So when we find the slope of this one, of course, we're going to count up. Whoa, let me write down the slope. slope is the ratio of the rise to the run. So we're going to count up. And this time, starting at the point, counting up one, two, three, four. OK, so we go up four. Really doesn't matter how far we go up, because we can't run. Our run is, is nothing. We can't run right. We can't run left. So what is our run? Our run is 0. And you know from our previous unit way back that we cannot have 0 in the denominator. Dividing by 0 is undefined. So we describe this as undefined slope. And any line that has an undefined slope is a vertical line. So you want to make sure you write that down. It is undefined slope because we have a 0 in the denominator. All right. So we've been finding slope from a line from a graph. We've been counting it. We had positive slope, negative slope. We just learned a moment ago of a horizontal line, which has zero slope, and now a vertical line, which has undefined slope. Now let's go and find the slope of a line that's given through just points. All they're doing is giving us points. We don't have a graph. They're just giving us some points. And so real easily with this one, all we have to do is label and do the slope formula. So we can go x1, y1, x2, y2. And we can do the formula, our slope formula. We always remind ourselves y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. By the way, usually, typically, people just say whatever point comes first, I'm calling that point 1 and subtracting it from this point that's listed second, which is called point 2. And so now we're just going to fill in the numbers y2 being negative 2 minus y1 is also a negative 2. And then we have x2, which is 7, minus x1, which is 1. And so now when we do this, negative 2 minus 2 is equal to 0. Over 7 minus 1 is equal to 6. So we have a 0 slope. Now notice, ladies and gentlemen, when we have a 0 slope, what did we notice? We notice that we have something that doesn't rise. It doesn't go up or down. The change in y is 0. In other words, the y coordinate of negative 2, they're the same. If the y coordinates are the same, we are going to have a horizontal line with a slope of 0. All right? Let's take a look at example number 8. In example number eight, I'm going to label again. I'm going to use a different color this time. I'm going to label again x1, y1, x2, y2. 
and using my slope formula, I'm not going to write it down again, but remember it's over here. And so we're going to use that as our template. And we're going to put in y2, which is 6, minus y1, which is a negative 7, over x2, which is negative 3, minus x1, which is a negative 3. And when we do the math, 6 minus a negative 7 is 13. And negative 3 minus a negative 3 is 0. We see that we have 0 in the denominator. So we understand we have an undefined slope. Also, we have a vertical line, because any line that has undefined slope is a vertical line. We just learned that a moment ago. It's a vertical line. And what do we notice about these points? That's right. In this case, the x was the same. If the x coordinate is the same, that means we're not running anywhere. Our run is 0, which means we have a vertical line with undefined slope. All right? Moving right along, now we've done some points. Let's go to a table. Let's go to a table and find the slope from a table. Now it's telling us that the points in this table lie in a line. So we're going to find the slope. That's very important that these points lie in a line, because if they don't, it is not working for us. So in this particular case, there's a couple ways to look at this one. One, we have these four points that they're listing us. Now remember, our x, y ordered pair is going to be vertical, x, y. Right? So if I write those two down, that's 1, 8, and the second one would be 4, 6 in the ordered pair horizontally. And Well, that's fine. Let's just use those two. Let's just use those two and call this one point 1, and this 4, 6, point 2, x2, y2. And then we can use our slope formula of y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and filling in the numbers, 6 minus 8 over 4 minus 1. And 6 minus 8 is negative 2. 4 minus 1 is 3. So that means this line is a negative slope line. It is decreasing. It's going down 2. And it's having a run of 3. OK, a couple other ways I want to think, I want to look at this, ladies and gentlemen. And that is, if I were to look at this table and I would say, hey, how do I get from 1 to 4, 4 to 7, 7 to 10. Well, I'm adding 3 each time. And then how do I get from 8 to 6, 6 to 4, 4 to 2? Well, I'm subtracting 2 every time. So I have a y that's negative 2 and an x that's 3. And as long as I write the change in y on the top, the change in y, we just looked at the table and said, hey, every time it's going down 2. And looking at the x, every time it's going up 3. So you might think of it that way. All right, awesome. Let's move right along to our next example. From a table, x being 1, 3, 5, 7, y being 2, 5, 8, and 11. Once again, we can go to that trick that I just showed you. And we can say, well, how is x changing? If we know it lies in a line, x is going from 1 to 3 to 5 to 7. It's going up 2 every time. And y is going 2, 5, 8, 11. It's going up 3 every time. And of course, we have to do y over x. So our slope would be 3 over 2. All right? Now, there's one last way I want you to look at it. Because some people really like this, and I remembered I, got, I, I wanted to show you. So I'm going to take this ordered pair. Take this ordered pair, pair here, uh, 1, 2. And then I'm going to take another ordered pair. Let's say this ordered pair over here, 5, 8. And I write them above each other. And then I just subtract them. And I say 1 minus 5 is negative 4. 2 minus 8 is negative 6. So now I have this negative 6, uh, negative 4, negative 6. And I remember that the y is negative, goes on top, and the x goes on bottom. And I have negative 6 over 4. And I remember a negative over a negative is positive. And then I remember that th I can simplify these by dividing by 2. And I still get my same slope. So sometimes using the slope formula in this way and remembering that y goes on top and x goes on bottom, 
you always have a way of doing your slope. Lots of ways. Ladies and gentlemen, we're just about done. Real quickly, on the last page of your notes, a real quick refresher on the summary of our slopes. We have a positive slope. A positive slope, which has a line that rises from left to right. We have a negative slope, which, has a, which falls from left to right. We have our horizontal line, which what we call is a zero slope. In other words, you have a zero in the numerator. So we're just going to write that zero in the numerator. And then we have our vertical line, which we call undefined slope. And where's the zero for that? That's right, we can put 2 over 0 as an example, the zero being in the denominator. All right? So that's a quick review of the slope. And on our last quick write, yeah, quite, a, quite long, but I've given you a copy. There it is. Get her done. We're going to review it when we come to class, and you're going to do just fine. I don't want to take up any more of your time. I really appreciate you giving me your time and working with me. It's always an honor to work with you. I'll see you tomorrow.